Hey, good afternoon. Happy Saturday to you here. It's Pastor Dustin Spiller with Vision Baptist Church. Boy, what a crazy week it's been. And a lot of crazy things have been happening all over the all over the nation. And we've seen some things that are really shocking to a lot of us in our lifetime. And I want to talk about some of these things and maybe hopefully try to bring some comfort to you. In our Faith Field devotional series, we've been talking about these introductory thoughts to the book of James. Today, we're finishing up this idea on this on this this train of thought we've been building on and we're talking about evading sinful behaviors we need to evade these sort of things to help us to be the christians we need to be now last week or i'm sorry last lesson on thursday we were talking about beware of external wrath and today i'm going to talk about the engrafted word that's some positive news and i think it's kind of timely for what's going on in our nation during this time it says over here in james chapter number one verses 21 and 22 it says wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves what we saw go on in our nation this this week ought ought trouble you it ought jolt you it ought wake you up it ought not scare you if you're a Christian. The Bible tells that these things are going to happen. We saw an attack on our capital this week, and I personally believe every person should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. If riots and uh, destruction of property were wrong back in summer of 2020, they should be they should be wrong in January of 2021. And then we started to see these attacks. Not directly on free speech, I would say, because, you know, these social media platforms are private platforms, but they are definitely testing the waters for the First Amendment rights that we have. And it it's pretty serious. Boy, what do we do during this time? Pastor Dustin, are you scared? No, I'm not scared. Our country is falling apart. Yeah, I understand that. It is. But Christianity existed before there ever was an America. Christianity uh, was around uh, before any of this stuff. In fact, Christianity was born in a time of political unrest. And so for the Christian, it ought not be a fearful thing to go through something like this. For the Christian, if you read in the book of Acts and th things, how things were during Jesus' time, this is, this is the time where Christianity was born in, born in when the Romans oppressed the Jews and things like that. And so these are times when Christians should be able to flourish. Now let me say, if you are scared, you need to wake up. You need to wake up because this is a serious time. The reason why this is happening is because a lot of things, obviously, but a global pandemic shutting down, and the big thing, about 50% of people who were in church are not in church right now. Do you think that's going to have an effect on our nation? And the answer is yes. A lot of people have went to sleep spiritually ever since this pandemic started. And, and don't get me wrong, some people have legitimate health concerns, and I'm completely uh, understanding of that. Some people, if they get COVID, they die. And I do believe COVID is real. It is. I mean, I know people who have died from it. So I'm, I'm not saying that's wrong, but we have fallen asleep. And what do you expect to happen? And, and how do we fix it is really the main thing. I'm not trying to harp too much on the negative. How do we fix it? we got to wake up, and I'm starting to see in areas people like poking their heads up, whoa, we better get back with God. My friend, it is time to return to the Lord. It really is. Uh, we got to get ourselves in check, and God's people can stop this. They have stopped it before, and they can stop it again. We are on the brink of a civil war. Yeah, I could say, you could probably say that, uh, but I think, uh, is this the end of the world? I don't know for sure. I'm sure people back in 1860s thought that th that was the end of the world in their time because everything was falling apart in America, but it wasn't. Things came back together. God's people can do something about it. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a child of God. What can I do? Well, first of all, according to this, there needs to be, we're going to talk about three things. There needs to be, well, four actually, a leaving, a receiving, a believing to prevent deceiving. We'll call that three things, all right? There needs to be a leaving in verse number 21. It says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness 
and superfluity of naughtiness. Now these are words that we don't usually say. These are, these are King James words, and they can be looked up. They're old English words. But this idea of filthiness means moral dirtiness. And this idea of superfluity of naughtiness simply means an overabundance of evil. There is moral dirtiness in our nation. There is an overabundance of evil in our nation. And the reason why we are seeing things and feeling things and scared of things is because we have not laid them aside. We need to lay them apart. That word lay apart, it was used all the way back in the book of Acts, chapter number 6 or 7, I believe it was. You remember the story where uh, Stephen was about to be stoned for preaching uh, the gospel to, to the Sanhedrin. He's right there, and he's telling them, you know, you are just like your fathers. You've, you've persecuted the prophets. You've persecuted the Lord. And now you're persecuting me. He says, you have always resisted the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that those, those, those men that heard them were convicted in their hearts. They gnashed upon him with their teeth. And the Bible says they went out, took him outside the city, and, and did a capital punishment for the Jewish people, which is throwing rocks at somebody till they die. And back in Acts chapter 7, at the very end, it says they laid down their coats at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. That word laid down and the word laid apart... Uh, is the exact same word. Now think about this. These men, were they angry or happy when they laid down their coats? Were they, were they upset or were they at rest when they were doing it? No. When it says they laid down their coats to pick up rocks to kill somebody, you can guarantee that they took their coats and they threw them down. They threw them down with anger. They threw them down with seriousness. They, it, it, at that moment, they were doing it because they thought they were doing the right thing even though they weren't. Now, here's the thing. This word lay apart is very serious. It's not talking about, oh, I just need to lay apart all filthiness. You know, I just need to lay down a little bit of superfluity and naughtiness. No, it means lay it down. There are things that are in our lives that are allowing us to become numb to what's going on. And it is numbing us towards God. And it, has, it is having an effect in our families. It's having an effect in our states. It's having an effect of our nation and in our world. It's time to stop cuddling up to sin. It's time to start taking it seriously, all right? Get the booze out of your house. Get the drugs out of your house. Get the get all the bad words out of your mouth. These things are not helping, all right? These things are not stealing is wrong. Lying is wrong. Taking the Lord's name in vain is wrong. We need to stop saying, "Well, I'm just going to try to do but we need to lay it down." There needs to be a leaving. And then there needs to be a receiving. Because here's the thing, when you lay something down, you don't just leave a hole in your life, you pick it up and fill it with something else. I'm saying that we in our nation need to lay down our sins. Uh, as it says in Second Chronicles 7.14, we need to turn from our wicked ways. And we have wicked ways here. It's all over. All right, But we need to replace that with something positive. And it says and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. My friend, we got to receive this. Take the sin out of your life. Listen, turn the TV off for a little bit. Put your phone down, all right? Turn off Netflix and open up the Bible and read it, all right? And let it into your life, okay? I'm not saying you can never watch TV. I'm saying you better be if you're gonna watch, you better have been in the Bible, all right, and you better be spending more time here than there. That's how it is. Receive with meekness. Now, how do you receive the Bible? You know, here's how a lot of people receive the Bible. Ain't gonna tell me what to do, Pastor Dustin. Ain't happening. You know, I'm gonna do what I want to do. Good luck to you. You go ahead and keep your arms crossed towards God and see where that gets you. Go right ahead. You can do whatever you want. It's still a free country, all right? But I'm saying, if you want change in your life, if you want to feel better, if you want to walk closely with the Lord, if you want His hand upon you, it's time to change from this to this. Lord, how can I change? Lord, what is it in my life that I need to do better? How can I? And, 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 and we, got this, we got this overwhelming fear that comes over us. We have this anxiety. We have this worry. We have this discouragement, depression, and despair. And we don't know how, how to fix it, but we've been sitting like this forever with God. It's time to say, God, what do you want me to do? Receive the word with meekness. I'm putting down the wall. 
I'm, I'm taking the wall that I have between me and you, God, and I'm going to get better. And once you do that, you take the leaving, the receiving, and then you need to start doing the believing. When God speaks to your heart, do it. As it says in verse 22, don't be, uh, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now think about that. So when God tells, speaks to you through the Bible, through church, do it. Don't just hear it. Oh, I heard it. No, I'm going to do. The Bible is not for your informational knowledge. The Bible is meant for application in your life. It's not just so, oh, I know about Daniel. I know about Moses. Oh, I know about all these things. Look at all the knowledge I got. I could tell you exactly where everything is in Israel. Who cares? Live the Bible. You know what I'm saying? We have a lot, enough people with knowledge that can, that can you know, tell you what certain things say, but they have no personal conviction in their life. There is no application. A little fired up today. But, here's the problem. There needs to be a leaving, a receiving, and a believing. You need not just to hear the word, but do it. And if you don't do it, there will be a deceiving. Because it says, Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. What, what can be deceptive about being just a hearer and not a doer? And churches are full of these sort of people who are deceived. All right? They walk in on Sunday morning, they plop down in their seat, they sit there, they're not really engaged, they're not really serious, you know, their mind is wandering, they're looking at their phone, they're, they're distracted, and then they get up and they say, you know what, I'm a spiritual person now, because I went and I heard. Spirituality is not by just listening to the Bible. You can watch this video a hundred times over and over again, and that doesn't mean that you are going to be spiritual. You can sit in church every single day that the, that the church is open. You can be there. That doesn't mean you're serious. You can open up the Bible and sit with it in front of you for hours upon a time. That doesn't make you right with God. What makes you right with God is when you not only hear the word, but you do it. But you do it. There's a lot of Christians out here. Uh, I was talking about this with a, with a friend of mine. There's a lot of Christians in this area, okay, that there's this form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They gloss over when it comes to getting serious about God. They think that God is just a lucky rabbit's foot, and as long as I have a Bible in my house, I'm good with God. No, you're not. No, you're not. Wake up. It's time to start living the Word. It's time to start doing it. It's time to start preaching the gospel, because people are going to start looking for it. Savior is not found in Washington, D.C. The Savior is found right here in this Word, and people need to hear it. It's time to wake up. It's time to evade sinful behavior so we can do something to make a difference. I hope you're doing well. If there's anything I can ever do for you, please let me know. I really want to help you. I want to help anybody I can. I'm not a perfect person. I don't claim to have all the answers, but I can show you the Bible that does. And if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. If you ever want to stop by our church, we'd love to have you. We really would. Uh, you need church in your life. You really do. And uh, you need Christian fellowship and Bible preaching and all these things are helpful. You need avenues to grow. Visit our church if you'd like to. Uh, we are located at 6370 South Canal Street in Riley. Our service is tomorrow, 11 o'clock and 6 p.m. We'd love to have you there. Have a great day. God bless you. See you later.